Hey everybody, Tony George, Hump Bay Update. Going to be giving you out. We're going to be talking about the NBA briefly. And a game. Just me and you taking a pee over a fence post. Just trying to figure out this line. And then uh, we're going to be talking about uh, the NIT game. The early game between UAB and Vanderbilt. I passed on this game because I have a six unit play in the Utah Valley Cincinnati game tonight. Off a winner last night with Wisconsin over Oregon, who was minus three starters. Catching points. No brainer. Come on. Going to be a low-scoring game. Wisconsin better. Yeah, got the win. So, um, and then tomorrow, of course, the Sweet 16 begins. I And, you know, I got to tell you something. There's going to be eight really good basketball games Thursday and Friday. I don't see anybody walking away with anything. There's some real, nobody is in the Sweet 16 by accident. Everybody earned their way in here. There's going to be some really good basketball games. You know, that just... There's there's one game on Friday I think is worthy of a top play. Probably do a two-pack on Thursday. Maybe a three-pack on Friday because I like the games a little better. Other than top play, we'll have a couple three-unit picks out. That's the plan right now. Things can change. You're going to see some big line movement here in the next 24 hours because now the public's getting involved. And they're going to swing dramatically. My picks are out at 8.30 in the morning Pacific Standard Time. When you get them, you bet them right then and there because those are the numbers we handicapped them at. A point, point and a half, two point swing, side or total, crucial. Get the best number. Best free tip you're going to get all day long. So over at DocSports.com, real quick, we got a six-unit top play in the NIT. Um, we've won over $1,000 for a $100 player. Our last two cards, including a seven-unit banger on Sunday. Uh, so we got a six-unit banger tonight. We passed on Monday and, and won yesterday. So let's get after it. Okay? And in the NBA, we have a two-pack. And one of the games that I passed on, about DocSports.com, free 60 bucks. Link in the description below. You've never been a member. We'll park $60 in any new member account. Use it on the website wherever you like. Don't like me? Eh, that's okay. Got 11 other guys over there. A lot of them on big rolls. You know, like Baskin Robbins. You might not like Chocolate Mousse Royale. You might like Pistachio Nut. You know, and I'm Chocolate Mousse, so, you know, that's okay. Grab a cone, get a flavor, let's go. Win money. That's what we're doing. This game tonight, and I put out a tweet today because I was listening to VEASAN this morning. I mentioned Polly over there at VEASAN. Always a, I'm up at 4 in the morning every day working, so I always put that on in the background. Uh, follow the money there on uh, VEASAN. Great show. Great guests. Um, and they had a sportsbook manager on there talking about how the handle is down 20% in the NBA. What do you think that is? Adam, and it's ironic to me because Adam Silver was the biggest proponent of all the commissioners for Major League Baseball, obviously the NFL, NHL. The NBA was leading the charge to get sports betting legalized on their sport because he knew it's the only thing that's going to save the sport because gambling and sports bettors drive the NBA and drive their ratings. I mean... If you got 500,000 people watching Oklahoma City take on the Pacers on a Thursday night on TNT, who do you think's watching that besides hardcore, and I mean hardcore fans? Because it's hard to be a hardcore fan of those two teams just in a hypothetical situation. It's betters. Well, it's really hard with your product to bet when you don't know who's playing. I mean, I've had a rough year this year in the NBA. I've told you a thousand times it's not my year in the NBA. You know, coming off a 2-0 sweep on Wednesday past yesterday. Half the games I was looking, I didn't know who was going to play. That limits your options. And then there's insane results anyway. You know, and by the way, for those of you that weren't paying attention last night, they carted Paul George off from the Clippers on the court. He, he might be out for the year. There they go. Kawhi Leonard and Paul George is a great one-two punch. Clippers are a good team. Without Paul George, that's a... You know, 
That's a big that, that, that that's a big deal. You know, that's a big deal. But there was a game tonight, now that I'm over that small little rant, that I liked a little bit. I wrote this up and I decided not to do a three pack, but a two pack tonight. I can't figure out this line in the New York Miami game. Now I got a prop bet in this game. And prop bets are coming off a four unit winner last night. We just cherry pick those two, three, or four unit plays. Just one a day, just cherry pick as we go. Easy money. Three unit one tonight in this game. Why is New York an underdog? Anybody been watching these guys lately? Anybody been watching Julius Randle? Top five player in the league. He had 57 the other night in a loss against Minnesota in one of the best basketball games I have seen in the last 30 days, including March Madness. Great basketball game. Back and forth, knocking down shots. Guys exhausted to the point of exhaustion, dragging themselves around the floor. Overtime game, and what a ball game. Randall had 57. Better team. I mean, Miami weighing two. I got just power rated at New York minus three and a half. Now, I'm a, you have to check the rosters. But I think New York comes here with purpose off a loss. Miami, average team at best. New York better. Anybody check out their offensive prowess versus what Miami's got? Big advantage. Best player on the floor. Big advantage. Catching two. Get them laying three and a half. That's a five and a half point overlay. You can't find a five and a half point overlay in the NBA these days. There's a weasel in the wood pile somewhere. If I was a betting man, I'd probably lean, lean a little bit on New York there. In the NIT tonight, as we mentioned, we got a top play in the late game, this early game, UAB Vandy. Now, we opened up with Vandy against Yale as a pick. Um, have I lost an NIT play yet? Maybe one. That's about it. I can't go back to back with Vandy here. I like UAB. Remember, bear in mind, UAB, they lost in their conference championship to FAU. Anybody see where FAU's been doing? Need I say more? UAB's a good team. Vandy, middle of the pack, SEC. Middle of the pack. Never know what you're going to get. So you start looking at, you know, UAB is the ninth rated team in the country offensively points per game. Number nine. Vandy's like 175. And UAB's ranked higher in defense. <clears throat> Let's look at the matchup edges here. And I know there's a ton of money on Vandy because you're saying, well, SEC school. Going to SEC, they, they're good in the tournament. SEC this, SEC that, you know. Football, basketball, doesn't make a difference, just SEC. You look at matchup edges, and bear in mind, the courts are the same size for UAB playing in their conference uh, than as the same size as they are um, in the SEC, Conference USA. You know, the rim height, three-point line. Matchup edges, it's, I mean, it, it Points per game, UAB. Field goal percentage, UAB. Free throw percentage, UAB. Oh, by the way, the pick and ball game, free throws are huge. Uh, defensive numbers, UAB. Rebounding, UAB. The only two matchup edges that Vandy has here is turnovers and a deeper bench. I mean, you're talking about a team that scores 81 points a game. Last five, they scored 76. Vandy, 73. Vandy's defense slightly better, but I'm telling you, with UAB opened up with a huge, they've won both their games by double digits. You know, and trust me, Vandy struggled with an average Michigan team. Moorhead State got pounded. They held them to 59, and they opened up with a win against Southern Miss. Southern Miss is a good basketball team. They were laying eight and a half in that game. The whole universe was on Southern Miss, and they beat them by 28. I'm going to lean UAB. 
Now, this is not something we're putting grandma's farm on. We're not selling the kids' college fund. Give me UAB to advance to Vegas. That's right. We're not going to Madison Square Garden for the Final Four. It's not the Big Apple in the Final Four anymore with the NIT. It's out here in Las Vegas, and I'll have tickets. Good luck today.